Welcome to the Metal Voice. Today on this show, we have uh, a legendary guitarist who's got a new album out on Atomic Fire Records on May 27th called Universal. I'll say it, the one, the only, Michael Schenker. <laughs> Hi, Michael. Hi, how are you? Good, 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 good. Congratulations well, I, on the I, new album. It's it's absolutely fantastic. And um, oh, thank you so much. I can't stop listening to it. So 2018, you know, with the release of uh, which was my favorite album of the year, Resurrection. It, 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 you're releasing almost an album a year, you know. It, what, you didn't hear from me for so long. What's the big turnaround? Why why so proficient th these days? Yeah, um, no, it, it 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 does every it does um, in my whole career. It's just pouring out. If I would have joined uh, Ozzy Osbourne, he would have been sorry, you know, because I mean I did so <laughs> many things. I did acoustic instrumentals, electric instrumentals, and uh, cover versions, and you name it. I mean, and and fifty years later, I got basically everything I wanted to do out of my system. So. Now I'm, I can relax and focus on the stuff I love most is the rock music that I do these days. Tell us about um, working with, this is, a, this is a surprise for me, My, uh, Michael Kiske from Halloween. You know, I was pretty surprised that he was on this project. Tell us about working with yeah. him. Yeah, I was surprised too. And uh, <laughs> it was actually, <laughs> it was an idea, you know, I'll, I must say though, I, I all the you know the only thing we know the only thing I know when I leave my home and go to Michael Foss co-producer uh, studio is I only know the music that I had written that I'm bringing over to Germany and he hits the recording button and that's when he starts to getting to know the songs and not before and uh, that's when we both start to watch how it's shaping up because we do everything in a moment so all of these little bits and pieces, all of these, these surprises or guests, you know, or family members, they, they, they kind of come, they occur as, as we go and listen to my music. And then we check, you know, we do electric guide on the, on the drums and the, electro, and the electronic bass and stuff like that. So everybody knows roughly what my, uh, my idea was because I only uh, record at home just the guitars. So we add all of these things to it, and then we start, and then Michael Foss, he has got, uh, he, he, he learns the song as I put them down, and he starts writing lyrics and, and vocals uh, straight away. And the next morning when I come from the hotel, and Michael Foss says to me, yeah, Michael Schenker, this is what I, this is what I came up with last night, and he, and uh, this one, say for instance, a king has gone as a, as a, as a example, uh, since it is with Michael Kiska, I say, yeah. Uh, I mean, he goes like, well, I play you this song. This is a, a memory of Ronnie James Dio. Oh, my favorite rock singer, fantastic. And then he plays it. And I say like, fantastic, Michael, this is incredible. And then Michael Foss says to me, what do you think of, um, you know, um, doing and um, asking the Rainbow Guys that were playing with, uh, with Ronnie James Dio those days, and I said, well, if he can get them, it would be fantastic. And he got them. And so we ended up with Tony Carey and Bob Daisley and Bobby Rondinelli. And then um, the, the uh, Nuclear Blast uh, head, head of Nuclear Blast in Germany, Markus Steiger, said, hey, what do you think of, of, of Michael Kiske? Let, let him try on this song. That would sound great for him. And I said, okay, let's, let's, let's do it. And when I heard it, I was blown away. I went like, fantastic, you know? So just to give you an example how things happen you know it, it's just like nobody knew that that was going to happen on that song and neither did we know on any other songs that they, all the other songs you know they happen the same way like on the on the spot or when we find like for instance um, a, 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 um uh, what's the song um, the, the 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 emergency song um for instance like uh, you know it's a very very it's a kind of a progressive song and uh, the record company, they went straight away when they heard that song. That's going to be the opener. And, <laughs> you know, it's very, diff very different. And the timing is kind of very, very, very difficult to understand. And, uh, but it's still catchy. So it's kind of a very 
a strange song and so we looked at it and went like you know what what we're going to do with the drums i think we should get simon phillips for that because he's good at those things you know and so we got simon in for that he did a fantastic job and and then you know everything else started to shape up we we gave it to ronnie and, and he had a go and we said well that that that's good enough for us and then you know and so so we picked the people but you know we have a main band. The main band is Ronnie Romero, Mike Roshenka, Photoshop, Baron Koba, and and Steve Mann. That's our main band. And then the others are guests, but they are not strangers because they are actually family. You know, because uh, Barry Sparks, for instance, he was with MSG in the 90s, and he is also a fan. And uh, he always emails and says, "I want to play on the next album," and so on. And so I always keep it in mind. And then we have Simon Phillips, of course, and then Brian Tichy, he played with us already like as long as eight, nine years ago on a, on a Michael Schenker's Temple of Rock song, Before the Devil Knows You're Dead. And uh, he's also a fan and fantastic drummer. And so, you know, the, the, the only actually uh, new people on this album, it's Michael Kiske, and uh, basically that that's uh, Michael Kiske and of course Bobby Rondinelli and Bob Daisley and Tony Carey. And, uh, you know, the, the Ralph Sheepers, he appeared on the album because he did such a great job on Immortal. I, I wanted him again. And Gary Bard, he, he, he appears on it because every time there is a, a piece of music I write that suggests a low, low voice, um, I get Gary because he has got the best low voice I know of. And it's a very bluesy and very uh, manly and vibrato and really warm sounding. So there you got it. You know, uh, all these people, they, they, they showed up, but no, nobody had a clue what was going to happen ahead of time. Okay. If you go back to The King Is Gone, I know it's, you said it was a tribute to Ronnie James Dio, but I'm listening to your solo. Is it not an homage to uh, Richie Blackmore at the same time? To me, to me, it sounds like Michael Schenker because I'm, you know, I, I don't, I don't copy anybody. And for 50 years, I haven't been listening to music, so I try my best. Uh, I really make an effort. I, you know, I always tell people I'm a spirit on a mission, spreading and expressing the joy of music uh, from a place of pure self-expression. So I don't have a record player, I don't have a radio, I don't have any music at home, not in the car. I have been doing that for 50 years. And, and that's my passion. That's what I was born for, to be myself, you know, to, to anybody can do it. It's just not anybody, not everybody or most people don't want to do it because they don't trust themselves. They don't think they're going to get rich or famous with it because they don't believe in themselves. And, and they rather stick to a trend and copy other people and, and get a piece of the pie. But for me, it was never important. So. Uh, but fame and, and, and everything else comes automatically anyway. But, but and that that what happened to me. But um, for me, the most important thing is to be an artist. And, um, you know, we are all unique people. If we go within ourselves, nobody can express what you can express. Um, you know, you, Jimmy or, or um, Alan, you know, it, it's, it's uh, we, we are all unique people. And whatever, if we express something from within ourselves, it, it comes across and that's how um, you know Kirk Hammett and Dave Mustang and all these people discovered my playing because it was coming from within it was something they had never heard before and and that's why they were you know um, um, that's why they got hooked on that you know as they told me themselves wow what about uh, I know Steve Harris from Iron Maiden you know he's a huge UFO fan Adrian Smith from Iron Maiden you know, he's influenced by you. At least I read about that. What are your comments on them? Yeah, it's all true. It's like uh, Steve Steve Harris is a complete Pete Wave uh, uh, fan. Uh, he even dresses like him. So does K.K. Downey from, from Judas Priest, dresses like me. You know, I went to the Whiskey when I was 18 years old, when I did my first American tour. And uh, I, 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 there was Judas Priest playing, and my girlfriend and I, we wanted to see because we heard about that you know and there was kk downing the guitarist from judas priest having my perm and playing a flying v and almost an identical outfit i mean i looked at my girlfriend she looked at me it, it was like deja it was like what is this you know it was me again you know i couldn't believe it it was unbelievable 
<laughs> everybody, everybody looks like you. Everybody's copying you, imitating your guitar playing, imitating your look. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The, well, at least that was in the eighties. Uh, that's what happened. You know, they either copied me or Eddie Van Halen, or they copied each other on the eighties uh, scene just to be part of a trend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking about the 80s, Michael, you have a song on the album called London Calling, and it describes the scene in England, uh, Britain, and the, and the 80s. Is there anything about that time that you miss? Well, you know, first of all, that, that the lyrics is written by Michael Foss, so he is the kind of, he fe he, he feels like he, he was born in the wrong, in the wrong, at the wrong time, because he is really an 80s fan. He's a Michael Schenker fan, my, he's my co-producer. And he, he, that's why we're working together. He really understands what I'm doing. But his fantasy, his imagination, the only way he can go back to the 80s is writing about it. And so, you know, I, I, I don't listen to lyrics. And so when I did an interview the other day, somebody was telling me, oh, this song, London, uh, London is Calling, what, how, what was this about your time in London? I said, oh, I, I didn't know it was about that. And you have to ask Michael first, because he writes all the lyrics. And then, you know, and then I kind of started to understand and realize, yeah, but probably Michael Foss probably writes a lot about me or writes a lot about those days in the 80s because he became, you know, he was, um, he was blooming in the 90s, you know, which was too late. Everything was gone by then. And so he really feels like he missed out. But, but you know, I always tell him, don't worry about the 80s, you know, something will happen. <laughs> so... Anyway, he is the guy who did, does all the lyrics because I thought the reason why I don't listen to lyrics is because uh, when I grew up, I, I couldn't understand English and uh, I was just focused on the music and I'm, I'm glad that happened that way. And so that's why I'm really uh, hooked on the music rather than for me, the lyrics is just like a singer being able to make sounds that, that, that fit. This is fantastic. You're, you still don't listen to the lyrics. You really focus on the, the music aspect. Oh yeah, day. but I yeah yeah, and, and here I know why uh, also I don't listen to to lyrics lately either is because I I keep thinking it's all about sex anyway. So why why should I be listening? <laughs> you know, I mean it's like fifty years of sex. You know what 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 else is there? what different lyrics can there be? So I didn't even you know try to analyze the lyrics. But now that somebody told me, hey, this song is about London. And, Oh, I said to him, maybe I should listen to the lyrics or ask Michael Foss what are the lyrics all about. So I have a little bit of uh, insight, you know, and so <laughs> it's a good idea. Maybe I should inform myself. What about bringing uh, Michael Kiske on tour with you? Was that, Did you offer him sort of like, you know, to come on stage no. for a few songs? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's very, very hard to do that, you know. But of course, if we are playing where he lives or he is available, um, you know, or he's on tour and he plays in the same city or whatever. Of course, I always make that effort. Um, uh, um, you know, if, if there are people there that have played on previous albums, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you know, I did the Michael Schenker Fest. It was a very expensive undertaking. It, it's uh, four singers on stage, nine people all together. It's a very, very expensive. Okay. But it was worthwhile. It was one of the greatest shows I've ever seen, Michael. That was. I'm glad you did it. Yeah, it it was absolute fun, I must say, you know, it was so, you know, when we started the Resurrection album and we were in the studio together for the first time, it was unbelievable to see four singers, you know, grown up singers having so much fun together. I had never seen before. It, it was unbelievable. Michael, um, just describe very quickly the musical sound on this album compared to the last album, the musical direction oh, on this album. Michael Schenker, I just make sure that the that that I you know I have the songs that I pick. They are always like songs that fit well together to make an album balance, an al like a good written book. You know, it does not, it should not get uh, boring. So I make sure there are different elements in there to always keep coming up with some surprises of something that 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 is uh, exciting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so it 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 could you know I I may end up with a not the best songs, but the best, uh, uh, you know, put together for an album songs. And, and that's very important. And basically, you know, Michael Schenker has written both of them musically. So the, the difference is that uh, these are new songs. <laughs> that's it. All right, a continuation. You know, it's, a like, 
It's a bit, yeah, it's a bit like a band, you know? Like, if you have Led Zeppelin, then the first album that sounds like the second album. Why is that? Because it's Led Zeppelin. It's the same band. They're just new songs. You know, you can answer this uh, last question or not. I mean, you, your brother, have you made peace with him? Last time we talked to you, it was a little rough. But is there, you don't have to answer if you don't want. I mean, it's up to you. But uh, Rudolf, Rudolf, my brother, is a bully, and I don't trust him. And I don't hang out or don't um, make contact uh, with bullies. And neither would, I don't think you like to, or neither does Alan. I don't, any normal person would, you know. It, it's just... Um, I don't feel very, I don't feel comfortable. Just simply, I don't trust him. That's it. You know, if if I would make contact with him, he would, he would carry on exactly where he stopped last. You know, it, it's just bad. Okay. All right, Alan. We have the tour, the tour coming up, the U.S. tour starting in September, and the Immortal kind of got lost in the pandemic shuffle here. So are you playing songs from both Immortal and the new album? Well, we, like, the same with with the set. I make sure that the set has always got surprises on there. It's well balanced. And it also has new old classics that we haven't played for a long time that people always wanted to hear, but we haven't gotten to it yet. I keep all my sets, most of them for the, from the last four, four, four years maybe. And I check them, what I played on the previous uh, uh, tours. And then I, you know, put some stuff that I think, you know, would be great to have in a set like older songs and then of course make a well-balanced uh, you know kind of not overplay not play too many songs of, of of every album which is impossible anyway but you know just kind of keep the a couple of highlights from maybe the last album and uh, and, the, and a couple of, of the new one and then also you know uh, have enough of the old stuff you know some, some new of old stuff some um, 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 you know, 80s MSG, et cetera, et cetera. So to make sure that, you know, that the, the known stuff is also present. You started off by saying, you know, it's a good thing you didn't join Ozzy Osbourne, you know. Uh, is there a part of you or, that or, or the Or all the others. They would have not liked it. <laughs> But I mean, is there a part of you that said, you know what, maybe one album would have been cool to do with Ozzy? Is no, there any... it is, that's, not how, that's not how it works. Because, first of all, when Ozzy's offer came up, um, I, I had to, you know, I, I, I after that, uh, because I almost fell for it, you know, but I had to, I have to always, I had from that, mo from that moment on, I had to figure out how can I protect myself from being tempted and not ending up doing something I, I shouldn't be doing or I, I, I would regret later. And so I, I came up with this thing like, Michael, why did you leave UFO? Why did you leave the Scorpions? And for the same reason, you should not join your uh, Ozzy Osbourne, Motorhead or Ian Hunter or any of those uh, who knows how many people have asked me, Deep Purple, etc., etc., for the same reason because I would have to copy all of the stuff for mm, live shows yes. they had done before. I hate copying, number one. It would not be Michael Schenker expressing himself, and it just would not make any sense to what my mission is. You know, it, it's just people never really understood. They always thought I had almost on an ego trip, but people never really spent any time understanding why I was doing what I'm doing. I mean, it takes 50 years. <laughs> Maybe it takes 100 years. Maybe by the time I'm dead, people start to understand what I was doing. But it seems to be very hard to exp explain to people. And, and then they, they still don't get the, 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 they get the wrong end of the stick. But maybe in a, in a couple of hundred years, maybe it, it kind of all comes to the, to the foreground, to the open people's uh, clicks, maybe, you know, I, I don't know. So the, the new album, Universal, anybody that's a Michael Schenker fan, you're going to love this. Nice, short, quick tempo songs, middle solos, outro solos, Michael Schenker playing solos throughout. It's, it's a great album. And congratulations again, Michael, on a fantastic album. Thank you so much. <laughs> 